Hello, my YouTube subscribers and my subscribers to be. I'm your host coming to you, Josie Latimer, coming to you again with the story about the police officer that shot Bodum John. This lady, mm, 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 she lies after lie after lie after lie. At first, I was trying to give her a benefit of the doubt, and I said, well, maybe she would get 25 to 50 years because possibly she didn't do it with an intent. But as I saw uh, this story on Geneva's closet, uh, I changed my mind. I think she should get life. And the reason I changed my mind, because that district attorney, he really, 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 he knew what he was doing when he cross-examined her. She said at first that she could not see anything but a silhouette. He came back and cross-examined her and he said, aren't there bright, bright lights in the closet that lights up when you open the door, if the door was open? She said, yes. That means she knew and she saw exactly what she wanted to do. Another reason I know she did it on purpose was because of the fact that when he cross-examined cross -examined her again and he said, um, didn't you have a choice to just close that door and run away than to walk in thinking someone had a, a weapon? She go, yes, I had that choice. I mean, she really told on herself, you guys, because Amber Geyer is guilty of murdering that handsome young man that had a life ahead of him. Unbelievable when I saw that testimony and also that cross-examine on Geneva's closet. I want to thank her for putting that out because it really, really, really opened my eyes to uh, not giving her the benefit of the doubt. You could see she was lying and she just, she's ugly. She has an ugly mouth, an ugly face. Her energy was ugly. Uh, her explanations were ugly. Her expressions, her look, everything about her is just pure evil. I just, the cry was fake. Everything was fake. And when they saw her in the car, um, the uh, DA pulled out when they saw her in the car and how she was just acting like it was nothing and she killed a person and they were hauling his body off and she was on her phone texting, you guys. And another reason I know she's a dirty person is because of the fact she was messing around with a married man on the job. I wonder what his wife is saying, you guys. I wonder if they're going to, that's going to be a whole nother story in itself because now his wife is totally embarrassed. She's humiliated. The kids are embarrassed. She really not only killed both of them, John, but she also destroyed and killed a family. Uh, a, a home, a married family, you know, a family, a nice family. She destroyed that as well. And she was saying, oh, no, I wanted to leave him alone out of respect. So there they were again. They were like, um, how in the hell can you show respect when you're still texting and sending all of these sex pictures to the man that's married? That's no respect at all. I'm thinking in my mind what actually happened, you guys, is that when uh, there was a guy on the witness stand and he said that uh, he and both of John, they smoke weed together, marijuana together. And there was some, uh, they got, I think, some write-ups or some calls about, you know, weed being in the hallway or weed being in the building or it was something where the office had gotten a hold of them regarding the weed matter. So I'm thinking that possibly the office probably told her because she's a police officer in the building about the weed smoking people. 
And she knew exactly where it was coming from. And she went up there and killed him because of that. She wanted to get rid of him. And she thought she could get by with it because she's stupid. Because she was a police officer, she felt that she could get by with it. Because another thing they showed was all of her friends um, supporting her. And she's on her phone texting like it was nothing when this man body was being taken away. And another reason I say that she's guilty is because of the fact that he possibly could have lived. He could have lived possibly. She didn't know if he was going to die or not. As the DA said, you didn't know if he was going to die because of the fact you had two or three opportunities to do uh, CPR on him. And you didn't. And then when she said, I did it a little bit with one hand. Well, that wasn't trying to save anybody. That was trying to kill him. I did it a little bit. Just that word, little. And like he said, you should put full force, 100% attention. You shouldn't have been on the phone. Or you should have put the phone on speaker and saved that man's or tried to revive him. Can you imagine how that man felt? He was lying there with his murderer. Pushing him with one hand, trying to take him, kill him all the way off. She looks guilty. She looks hard. She looks like she has no remorse. All of the tears were fake. Amber Geyer is guilty. Because she not, did not follow protocol. She did not follow the rules of how she was trained for over 3,000 hours. She didn't do any of the above of how she was trained. And she had a chance to walk away, you guys. That's where the jury is going to hang her by the neck. Because she did not walk away and she had a chance to. She wanted to go in and kill him because he smoked weed. And she's saying he was walking, pacing side to side. Okay, if you're saying he's pacing side to side, walking side to side, that's not coming towards you. Okay, then she said he was coming against her. Then she said she gave him commands to raise his hands, but nobody heard it. No one heard it. She saw he didn't have a weapon in his hands because from the light, remember? The light in the hallway was very bright. And what got me was when Amber Geyer said, they they asked her, well, how did you hold the door open? How did you do it? She's, she told her, her um attorney, well, I put my bag down to hold the door open. Well, you guys, don't you think if she put her bag down, she would have noticed the red mat that she did not have in front of her door? Everything was surrounded by around that door with a big, bright Christmas red doormat. Amber Geyer is guilty. She's guilty as all get out. She looks guilty. She cries guilty. Oh my God, her energy is guilty. She just looks like she's a, just a mean, hostile, evil person. When I really, really, really noticed that uh, video on Geneva's closet, I saw that um, the girl is super guilty. I mean, she's guilty. She's guilty because she didn't save his life. At first, on one of my videos, I was trying to give it a benefit of doubt. I said, well, maybe they should just give her 25 or something. Or maybe they should give her something not life because of the fact that they are not sure if she did it with intent or non-intent. But after watching the full testimony on Geneva's Closet today, all of that changed with me. It all changed because she got caught in so many lies. And even when she got up to show how she shot the gun, it just looks like nothing. It was it was like it was like all fake generic. It was it was like it was like if I was on the jury, I would want to vomit. I would want to vomit because she's guilty is all get out and she thought she could kill that man. And then I didn't like the fact that uh, when her attorney was asking her a question about how did she feel and, and she almost said the word shit and then she called herself. I don't know if you guys caught that. She almost used the word shit. 
That means she's a shit person. Um, yeah, her attorney was asking her something about how does she feel and and this and that. And, and, and yeah, she almost used that word shit and she corrected herself real quick. So that was really who she was when she, she was about to say that in court. And another thing I, I didn't like about her was when she um, lied about that truck saying that she didn't pull over when they have evidence that she did pull over and talk to the married man. So she lied a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. And a lot of the stuff she really admitted to, except for she didn't admit to pulling over on some of the things she said, I don't remember. And he had to pull it out. And um, he pulled out a text message that she was talking to a lady officer about that weed in the apartment building that the managers already had mentioned. And there was a guy on the stand, uh, a witness on the stand saying something about he and Bolton John smoked weed together in those apartments. And, and the people had uh, kind of got on them about weed or something like that. So it's all to me surrounding that weed situation. And she told the lady, uh, the other police officer, oh, I like the apartment except for the weed smokers or something like that. And remember, the guy got on the sand. He was a young man. And um, he said he had his own businesses or whatever. And he said that they smoke weed uh, together. I mean, he actually broke down and cried um, when he was doing his, his uh, testimony. It was something else. So that lady went there when she could have walked away with an intent to kill uh, because you know what? Sometimes people don't think and they do stupid stuff because she thought that she could do that and get away with it because she was a blonde. And that doesn't work anymore. It doesn't work. Your friends can't help you. Can nobody help you? You have to pay. But when you took away a life, a decent person from this planet of the earth for no earthly reason other than him smoking his weed in his own apartment. And basically, after hearing that testimony, again on Geneva's closet, I really think that was why she killed him. Because she had been hearing about the weed from the apartment people. She knew exactly where Floyd was coming from. They possibly could have told her, if they do a little more investigation, they can find out, did you guys talk to Amber Geyer about that weed situation? She knew about it. She knew about that weed situation in that apartment building. And when she said, I was tired, I was, oh, I was tired. And the DA was like, you wasn't tired enough to say you was going to go to the gym and work out after you worked 13 hours that day. So if you're saying I was so tired when I did this and that, well, you wasn't that tired. You were going to go to the gym. You said you was going to go home, get dressed and go to the gym, which was downtown Dallas, a pretty good piece of way to drive. And he said, I, I guess, he said, if you're that tired, you could have ran over something, hit somebody, hurt somebody. So she wasn't that tired. So he caught her in that lie. He caught her in that lie because he said, what were you going to do that evening? And that's what she said she was going to do. It's go to the gym, get undressed, do this after a long day's work. But you was tired and that's why you killed him because you was just tired and you didn't know what apartment you went into. I don't buy it. Anytime you go to your house and you see a big red mat. Now, I know people do make mistakes, as I've said uh, before. People make mistakes. I went to the wrong car. But the thing of it is, is... When she stayed in that doorway with all of this activity going on around that doorway and that mat is right there in right in that doorway where she had to stoop down, sit her bag. She said she propped the door open with her bag. When she did that, you can't help but see the big red mat. The door is open. So her story just does not add up. And she's guilty. So you guys, let me know what you think. Thank you for tuning in to my audio. And please click like, share, and subscribe. 
And I'll be coming back with more about the Amber Geiger case. Thank you for tuning in. Let me know what you think. Bye. Guilty.